Night Live. Hello, friend. It's good to see you again. Another Friday Night Live with You're Gonna Need a Bigger Boat. With a very, very different view from normal. Because this is comfort food done easy. <laughs> <laughs> no pans. We're still cutting up some stuff. Yeah, we cut up a little bit of onion here. And he cut up some potatoes. He's making homemade french fries. Oh, yeah. And as you can see, I have a bunch of them. I'm going to do one more batch here. Just making a few preparations. Got the fryer as hot as it will go. <laughs> so make some crispy fries. High gear. Okay. Oh. Good morning. Good morning. morning. Good man. Breakfast? Oh, dude, these. Talk about golden fries. Oh, oh, I don't have a good light angle over here. Grab me a light, bro. Grab me the. <laughs> There's one right there. Oh, one on the buffet. I don't have a good light angle over here. No, all the lights are here. Hey, he got the live up. I'll just turn your phone sideways and we'll be happy. Oh, you don't like okay. it like that? I can uh, promise that way. Look yeah. at those french fries. <laughs> those are french fries. Hi, Kathy. Hi, Roberta. <laughs> Better keep that hand. You can see. No, because watch. See? If you go like this, you can still read all the comments. Because it loads them sideways on the screen. Uh, oh. Uh, and for, so the view you guys never get to see. Hi. Close up. Close up. <laughs> yes. But hidden up under two pans. Let me see which two pans I take down. I think it's right here. If I grab this pan and that pan, you'll see that's how Owen reads the comments. It's hanging up underneath the pot and pan rack. Yeah, you guys get to be behind the scenes tonight. Right. Totally different view. Because <laughs> Owen's over here eating all the french fries on us, guys. We are fighting in Michigan. I caught a bath yesterday, Kevin. You didn't right. have a speaker. Say it again. I had to be loud enough. <laughs> I think they heard me. I don't know. Boom. I was pretty loud. All right. Mm -hmm. So tonight... We have. Oh, did you get them out? Oh. I don't have the hot dogs out yet. No, my. I'm getting my there. magic mix. Oh. In, in this bowl is the magic hush puppy mix to go with the hot dog. And this is uh, we made this last night. And it was so good. And I made it for a snack earlier. And I just made enough extra that we could do hush puppies tonight over chilling out. Katie, Sorry. <laughs> give me the low down dirty hush puppy recipe. Hush puppy recipe. It's a cup of cornmeal, like two thirds cup of flour, one egg, teaspoon and a quarter of baking powder, and uh, two thirds, two thirds to a cup of buttermilk. Or if you don't have buttermilk, you just use milk. It works the same. Then I diced up a half pound of mushrooms, jalapenos, and pepper, pepperoni. Literally like a half pound of each and mixed in there. And so our hush puppies have pepperoni, jalapeno, and mushroom. In them, and they are good. Here we go. Guess we're using the back burner tonight. We're using the back burner. So don't want to light. So, how, how has today gone? Oh, man. We're, we're winning. Like we're Charlie winning. Sheen. Tiger blood. Drinking tiger blood and winning. <laughs> Owen's got a whole bunch of fiberglass laid out on the bow of this boat. And after some food tonight, there's a bunch of resin that I've got next. I'll check that out back up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Tough so, tonight... Tonight, we're not making our own chuck wagons. Tonight, we are doing chili dogs. And and I was supposed to pick up some extra oil for the fryer. Totally forgot. Got up there, got everything else. It's got oil. Enough. 
everybody, well, everybody, Owen and me, it's been a long time since we've had deep fried hot dogs. Deep fried hot dogs, but. You ruined it. You want me to just put them in a cast iron pan? I don't know how you're fixing them now since you said you weren't frying them. We can fry them. I'll fry, I'll fry like, we'll fry them as we go. So I'll put in like Perfect. six hush puppies <laughs> and, two hot, and three hot dogs. Perfect. Something like that. All right. We'll, we'll, we'll try. Well, there you go. Deep fried chili dogs. Cool, Kevin. Oh, give me the french fries. You got to read the comments. I'll read the comments. No, you're eating all the french fries, not reading the comments. I, I read the comments. Okay, we can't read it. Oh. Kevin just tell me to send pics after the live stream. Oh, nice. About cool. about bath and thirteen hundred. Cool. Where'd you get it? I don't know. And did you see what me and Kate, me and Owen did today, Kate? No. We filled up the bottle of baby rays. Good. Yes. Turn that down on low. Down by Conklin is where they got the fish. Cool. Yeah, so. Owen, you want to show them what you've been up to? Do you want, or? here, you can borrow my chili. <laughs> there you go. Okay. I like chili. And while the french fries are going, let's follow this young man. Happy young man I am. Here you go. The deck is on. Been secured. Yes. yes. We used the brand nailer and pinned it all down, all the pieces. So they're all pinned down. And I drew a line here across the board. So when I go to lay my resin on, I know how far to go back. And then I can put the fiberglass on top and then put the resin back on top of it so it's all fiberglass in. Are you drinking out here with those glasses? No. You want to explain what those are? Those are cut up pop bottles so I can put the resin in there and use the resin with the paintbrush which is over there. Perfect. Yeah. So it has come a ways. A long ways. But we went through tonight, trimmed everything, cleaned everything up. I'm going to sit you guys down because I know how much it likes to jump around Jump around when I'm holding it. So we'll sit you guys down for a minute. And he has, where'd you put it? Where'd it put what? Right here. Right here. Oh. Over on our side. Yeah, I'll go over on our side. You know, it's got a little dust on it, but. What's the difference? It, it fits. So nice, guys that once we because it'll get caulked in after we well glued in technically glued in and then pin nailed. right well we right now. use a adhesive caulk and we'll line it where it's going to sit and then we'll pin nail it and let it harden but yeah go ahead and push it down a little bit there yeah that's what she looks like when she's in place so and then what we've decided the, where the fiberglass is, this part of the deck's going to be white, but right in the center, big red stripe. And the red stripe yeah. is going to match. We discussed this tonight. Bear with me. So, touch down. Okay, there you go, Owen. This white nub right here. If you can envision this red with this right with this red pinstripe on the bow with this being white around it, that's what it's going to look like. But going back and then on the back of it, we're going to add a little red right. stripe. So it looks like it goes all the way through. Right. And then that will also give also give us a design for our center cushion when we do the in, the interior of it, the upholstery right. side of it. Right. That way we're sticking with the, the same exact theme all the way through like like the stripe will match the graphics on the side yeah. which will match the interior that's going in it like yep. it will all match so 
can you wait? I know you can't wait I to can't. just dip your hands in fiberglass I, all night long. I can't wait. It won't be all night. Say, so let's uh, we'll do the center section, the mid section. So half hour there. By the time, well, it won't Probably be half midnight. hour. Well, you got fifteen minutes. You better have it on in fifteen minutes. Yeah. But then I'd, I'd say a half hour per between each setup because you'll get that all pushed down. Then you'll mix up your next set, set and, and push and it do down. Yeah. So uh, about about two a.m. Son, about two a.m. You ought to have a fiberglass deck. And then once the glass is down, that's just when the work begins. Yeah, because then, then you, you got to sand and sand it, put the gel coat on, sand it sand again. again. Yeah, all the fun stuff so to make what, it look nice. That's where we're at with this boat. Now there's progress being made outside. On Katie's boat, but um, those videos are to come soon. But she's making progress on hers. So, but I won't steal her thunder on what's going on there. Right. But this one, it's getting there. Let's go see how the fries and everything are doing, guys. Fries. Let's follow this young guy right back in the house. Don't. Did I do wrong? Get out of here with your fiberglass salt. I didn't get fiberglass anywhere. <laughs> okay. Did you pull my other batch of fries? Are they nope, ready? they're cooking. They're, they're I cooking. don't think they're done yet. Not they're quite ready? yet. Oh, they're pretty Looks great. Looking they're coming. Good. I can't wait to see it on the water. It looks nice. Yes. Oh. Thank you, guys. You know, these might actually have a minute to go still. Yeah. There, there was more that time when I threw them in there. Oh, look, though. I did pour you, and I mixed it with some hot sauce for you. Oh. <laughs> I, I don't excited. think he wanted hot sauce. <laughs> oh, I was good with just barbecue. I'll, I was good with just the barbecue. Yeah. Oh, well, that's not that much spicier than just the barbecue itself. So, for Katie's treat tonight, have what? The Detroit is next, right? Um, actually, the Romania, if we're going chronologically, the Romania would be next in line. But the Romania is bigger than the Detroit. And I'm talking about boats from the 19, early 1900s. Mm -hmm. um, yes, the Abel Abbott Low was 38 feet. 33 feet at the water line. Then that was 1902. In 1905, the Romania set for a voyage across the ocean was a 40 foot. Did he give you back your microphone? Oh, okay. It's a 40 foot craft. Jonathan wants me to tell you all about the Detroit, which was a, or I mean, I'm sorry, the Romania was a 50 foot craft. Jonathan wants me to tell you about the Detroit, which is a 40 foot craft. But I think one of the things that makes the Detroit special was uh, the name. <laughs> I'm kidding. The captain was Thomas Fleming Day, who was actually an avid sailor captain, had sailed a small boat called, no, I'm not going to remember it off the tip of my tongue. Maybe it'll come to me later. Anyways, it was a small, like, 18-foot little sailboat across the ocean. We didn't actually make it on the little sailboat. And this was... What happened? This was before 1900. I think it was, like, late 1890s, I think. He got, like, halfway across the ocean and then got picked up by a steamer. Didn't finish the trip himself. He, the steamer carried him and his little ship the rest of the way across. Um, the Detroit... That's like if you're racing and you blow the engine and end up on the tow truck, you didn't, even though you made it to the finish line, you didn't win the race if the tow truck got you there. Right. So he wasn't racing, though. I mean, that was something he was doing for pleasure. Um, I guess what makes the Detroit story so, like, great is that he had done it before and failed, and then... He's also the 
creator of the rudder, which in the early 1900s, there wasn't many um, publications. Pu yeah, publications or pamphlets or articles that was just strictly dedicated to motor boating or boating in general for that matter. And he, he was the editor, the first editor and the creator of The Rudder, which is a magazine that ran from like the 18 something till 1970s. So uh, his, his trip in the Detroit in 1912 was very well documented. It's just a cool story, another one, you know, and, but if we're going chronologically, the Romania would be next up. And I don't know, brings this up to me tell you about it but i don't know that much about the romania no that's why i was talking um, about the detroit right i want to talk about the detroit because the detroit's pretty epic the like detroit but i don't know that much about the detroit yet either i haven't even delved into it that much so which one were you telling me about he was oh we were reading some of the passage to me the other day. Okay, so because he can't keep these all straight. Now, that passage was about a man called Alan Cargo. Cargo, Cargo, I'm not quite sure how to pronounce his last name. Um, and he actually was a U.S. Navy, I'm not sure what he did in the Navy, but he was also a pilot, an airplane pilot, and also an architect. And he designed and built his own cabin cruiser. They were called Cargill Cutters. And he built it. Uh, it was a 30 foot cabin cruiser, but it was designed with really tall sides so that it was kind of like a houseboat underneath. And then you sat on the top, like kind of like a flybridge. To drive it and so all you were sitting basically on top of the cabin of his boat and the sides I don't know how tall they were but they were tall um, but the ship weighed like 6,500 tons isn't that what I said the other day no 6,500 pounds Six, yeah 6,500 tons is a lot right 6,500 pounds That's so they were light for a boat that size yeah uh, so he outfitted that with 1,200 gallons of diesel and Volvo Penta diesel. Yep, Volvo Penta diesel, one single engine. And he took that across the ocean and made the trip and was hoping for that being the, the poor man. Wait, wait, wait. Before you go to what you're going to, tell them, they didn't make it without stopping though. <laughs> Did they not go into new new 40 farm? and 50, 50 knot winds. Yes, they encountered heavy weather. The six days were wonderful, and on the seventh day, the weather came. And they weren't very far. They just left. Well, they were they were six days out. I don't know. You Generally, you get like, what, 100, 150 miles a day. Because isn't lucky. that the one where they took the photographer with him? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and, Filling in all my holes in my story. Yeah, yeah okay, so... The, the builder of the boat, the designer of the boat went. He also recruited one of his Navy buddies to go with him. He also recruited a friend from his childhood, if I remember correctly, and a reporter from the local news station. They made it through six days, great sailing, best weather that could, he had ever seen in all his years of piloting and, and, and Navy, being in the Navy and everything. The seventh day hit, they fought through the storm, and they actually stopped, dropped anchor from the aft and from, from the stern. No, I thought it was just from the front, and then they used the motor to pull no. it back. They dropped. No, that was later. Oh. No, that was during the, that... That big storm? Yeah, that was during that big storm. Um, so they figured out, though, that if you got your your anchor out of in the front of you see and, anchor and he dropped the sea anchor out of the back of them too right, right but they were dragging a sea anchor not an anchor right a sea anchor but he figured out that if he's got the sea anchor out 
and he's got his boat just in reverse, not accelerating in reverse, but just in reverse, that it would pull on the anchor forward and pull the front of the boat up out of the waves. Which is kind of cool to know that. I mean, that's good information to have. So anyways, they get through the storm and they were pitching up to like 40 degrees uh, during the storm. The, for the photographer, the newscast guy that was going to do the documentary all the way across did not make it through the storm. They actually diverted over to... Ooh, 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 ooh. French fries, hush puppies, and look at those deep fried hot dogs. I love deep fried hot dogs. <laughs> They're the best. They're good. Yeah. Um, was it New Finland? Yeah. Did I say New Finland? Yeah, they went to New Finland. Yeah, they dropped the photographer off in New Finland. Didn't want to finish the trip. Yeah, he was the one. So, yeah, all done. But they did make it all the way across. So that's that was Alan Cargo, and that was that was in the seventies. I think that was in the seventies. I don't know that was the eighties. At any rate, if you're older and you were alive when Elvis died, because the whole point of making this trip with this boat Yeah, you're was about to, to prove, date exactly when it was. Right. <laughs> he made this trip to prove the capabilities of his boat because he knew that his boat was capable of an ocean crossing and everybody else said no 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 you're gonna die blah 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 and he's like no my i'm gonna prove it and because he didn't have the kind of money that say chris craft or owens or any other big boat building company at that time had this was the cheapest way for him to get publicity and he made it. He made it over there. And he landed on the same day that Elvis died. So. You are going to be the, the, the caretaker <laughs> of stories. Elvis is still alive, Kevin. I'm with you. Yeah. The caretaker of the stories that nobody's heard of because nobody cared enough. Right. Something else happened. Right. He did not get the level of publicity that he deserved. He was totally, totally covered. Or, or what do you call that? Overshadowed. Overshadowed by the death of Elvis. So whatever day that was, if you were alive when I was passed away, or what would be something? He passed away in the 70s, late 70s, like 78, 79, I thought. Um, I don't remember either. Where's your phone? I'm sure you can find it's out. It's right quick. here. I'm, I'm waiting for somebody to say it. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So at any rate, uh, he didn't have a lot of money, uh, but at the end of the day, he proved the seaworthiness of his boat, and he ended up making like 400 of his hulls and sold 400 of his August boats. August 1977. 77. Yeah. I know it was late 70s. So, yeah. So, if you've never heard of the Cargo Cutter, it's Elvis's fault. <laughs> Now we're blaming dead people. <laughs> right? Yeah, so that was Alan Cargill. So the Detroit and the Romania, though, back to those stories, those were, you know, 1905 and then 1912 was when the Detroit went across. And the Detroit was Thomas Fleming Day's. Um, I don't even know. I think it was more than his second trip because he had gone back and forth a few times, I think. Well, I'll, I got to do the research and get it all together and then make a video about it. But they, um, their poor boat, they loaded that thing to the hilt with fuel and supplies and food. And like, I think four people or five people went on that tri trip with. Thomas Fleming Day, he actually had a captain on the boat beside himself. But I don't know any of the particulars. He wanted me to cover it. But I don't know any of the real particular good stuff about the story yet because I haven't done the deep dive. Well, I but thought yeah. there was some, like, he was, like, like overwhelmed and 
there was some. You were telling me some stuff the other day about it. The sixteenth, he was yeah. forty-two. Yeah. Anyways, that so one of those stories is going to be the next story that right. Katie tells. The Romania is a cool story because I'm going to give it away, I guess. But the Romania doesn't make it. <laughs> we'll just we'll just get that right out there. <clears throat> Everybody survives. Everybody, nobody gets harmed or anything. They're saved. Everybody survives, including the engine, but no other part of the boat. How they the hell the do you save the engine but not <laughs> save the? Was it an outboard? No, no, no. It was a very very expensive engine. <laughs> Very expensive engine. The boat's going now. Get the engine. Get the like, engine. Like, I think, if I remember correctly, and sometimes I read so much stuff, a lot of it kind of gets jumbled in there, but I want to say that back in 1905, the engine was like $1,500. Well, which would probably be what? The equivalent of like 30 today How or much? something? $1,500 in 1905. Oh, that would be like. Probably like a yeah. hundred thousand. It was an or extremely yeah. expensive engine, and I want to say it was. They said fifteen hundred dollars. Well, we, so they well, saved here, here. the engine out well, of the Romania before. So fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. To put that in perspective, when the Model T came out, Henry yeah. Ford's Model T it was like eight hundred some dollars. Yeah. And then eventually they got it down to three hundred dollars. Right. Over time. Right. So basically, like. In 1902, that would have been two brand new Model T's right. from Henry Ford or whatever. Right. Right. Excuse me a minute, guys. Well, well, that would have been right. Yeah, yeah. It was an expensive engine, but we'll we'll have to give them that one. Oh. So you just remember when we are sinking, and I go, hey, get that Yanmar. We need that Yanmar. Right. <laughs> oh, how are we doing here? Yeah. So the hot dogs are ready. The hush puppies and hot dogs are all cooking here. These are... You know, if you try. want, I got a... Uh, these are done, more hush puppies. I love them. And more hot dogs. Dinner the easy way. Yeah, it's a very simple night tonight. Ah. I'm right there with you. Yeah, but simple can be good. Yeah. I'll tell you one thing though. Now I'm not mad that you put hot sauce in my barbecue sauce here. There's a mug to get the hush puppies in there, and I bet it's really good on the hush puppies. I bet it is. Oh, yeah. Good. Mm-hmm. Really good. Oh. So, on a different note, anybody that's looking for something to watch on YouTube, besides <laughs> the same old stuff, what are the Amy's Solo Sailing Adventures, right? Yeah. There's a channel. Yep. I thought you were gonna bring up the uh, the new wind wing. The wind wing. <laughs> <laughs> what was the wind wing? Oh. <laughs> That's what I thought you were going leading with. I'm like, this is hilarious. Okay. So Gavin, I will send this out later. And Maybe we'll add the link in the description for the video. Somehow, yeah. We got to get that. I'll put it out in a post or something. She come across this. This new innovation. Brand new technology. Brand new technology Say that fuel. was first launched to bring us into the green new world. Yes. <laughs> it's a fixed wing thing on a ship. Or some kind of sailboat sail thing, but it's not an actual sail. It's, it's a, like carbon. It's made right. out of like carbon. I don't know what it's exactly it's made out of, but it's light enough that they put two of if them. If windmills really, weren't bad enough for what those things cost and inefficient, what, they found something expensive. 
to throw on a ship. I'm sure it works uh, to an extent. What it save a ton and a half of fuel a day, uh, three tons a day. Out yeah. of twenty five, uh, they said fifty send tons. Yeah, twenty five to fifty tons of fuel they burn a day, and having those wings on the ship saves them three tons of fuel a day. Supposedly, and you know that's under like absolute best conditions. Anyways, long story short, who cares about that? The comments. We went into the comment section, and it is, is, I mean, ruthless. Wow. Ruthless. Who would have thought wind power would have been a thing on a ship? <laughs> so we've discovered sails. <laughs> uh, like, it's just ruthless. Line after line, like 200 comments. Yeah. Like, and, and literally, like, halfway through, somebody's like, I am literally just here for these comments. Like, it is the funniest shit you read. Stuff. Yeah. Funniest stuff. It's pretty good. Because it really is a gimmick. Because that same ton and a half of fuel they're talking about saving. Slow the ship down a half a knot per day. Right. And you just yeah. save that fuel right there. Boom. Yeah. You know. And I'm all about economy. But I guess every dog has to have it today. I don't know. Who would have thought trying to get away from burning all that diesel, you would have had wind power on a ship, though? I mean, right. innovative. It was hilarious. It was pretty funny. Yeah, I sent it. I sent that to Justin there the other day or what? Yeah, it's, it's just the comments, man. They were pretty good. I love a good brutal comment section, even if it's my own. I can take it. I can take a ding. <laughs> Then we were watching our favorite YouTubers this last week, though, after our live, and they put out a video. What was it? Spirit Animal, Adventure Dan, and a couple other ones that all met their boats together in the Bahamas to hang out and spearfish. And when you're eating them fish off them reefs and stuff, certain areas are more prone to that. What do they call it? Sickness? Sleeping. No, no, no. Um, anyways, there's a sickness that the fish get that is toxic. Yeah, I don't remember. And it doesn't hurt the fish, but it hurts humans. I've had it one time. You have? Oh, yeah. It's miserable. Hmm. It's miserable. Anyways, they all ate what was it? Uh, was it yellow tail? Yellow tail. Yeah, it was something. Yeah, yeah that they ate. That is kind of like no one like more likely to have it. And yeah, like three boatloads of them all suffering sick. I'm sure that's why Spirit Animal didn't have a video out this week. Maybe. Mm-hmm. But. And Katie launched one of her two new channels this week. One. She launched. I launched a video on a channel. Well, right. We had the channel name for a couple of years, but we finally put the first video up. Right. On the Ruski version of this channel. You got to film a, a video for your boneyard upholstery, though. Yeah, when I do his, I'll probably do the first one. Right. Five? Yeah. I don't know. Don't you guys think that... I think she should go through because... Let's see. Everything you've sold is either still here or in our yard right now, pretty much. Yeah. You did the Jeep interior. You did the one jet boat. Yeah. The 
Tierra's not here. There's a little bit that's not here, but there's enough to. Got an idea. I have a hush puppy, please. I think you ought to go through. And you tell I think she needs to go through for her first video on her thing, on her channel, and show all the upholstery work she's done today. Yeah. Then you can add to it. I'll have to do it on a nice sunny day. No. Absolutely. It's been a busy week. Yeah. Can't close up again. So about this time, we, did we cover everything we made? We opened one can of chili, heated it in a pan. <laughs> it was very self-explanatory dinner tonight. I, I took four potatoes and I sliced them very thinly into super thin, super duper thin fries so they cook quick because they're from real potatoes. Oh. And then I grabbed the hush busby stuff. And it all went through the fryer. Yep. Mm. That is good. Mm -hmm. Kevin, you in town this? I can't read. Is it? Are you? Are you in town this weekend? You guys are hogging the hush puppies. Yep. They said, yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. I know it's that time of year when he's busy. Hmm. I think I like the fries better than the hush puppies. They're little. I'm just a little bit crushed that you said that. I'm about to say the same thing. I poured my heart and soul into them hush puppies. I'm dead. Starts Monday, he says. Mm. Oh, yeah. I gotta make myself in our hot dog, though. Yum. Well, at least the weather finally broke. The boats are starting to go in the water. They yeah. are. Even though they could have been putting them in for a month. You, Owen's going to break into a pinion here pretty quick. Get that one and put that on Marketplace. Free space in the yard. That is my goal. Yeah, we're going to get rid of the yellow submarine. We never officially named it, but we kind of unofficially named it the yellow submarine. Oh. Garden centers, kitchen racks, and taking naps. Plus door door. Mm -hmm. I see. Mm -hmm. Pick up a fry. Yep. I get right in the camera, Chuck. Come on. Yeah. So. Yes. Anyway. Are you guys going to make a video of you fiberglassing tonight? Yeah. Uh, I would say that we are definitely. Yep. Playing glass. That'd be really cool. We can make a slow motion or a sped up video on that. 
We're not doing time lapse. You just work faster and it'll look like time lapse. <laughs> I mean, not as good as the Grand Coney, Kevin. But not bad. it'll do in a pinch. They're good just like this, too. And you know you've made it, you know you've made it, and are YouTube successful when you get calls from somebody that wants to do YouTube on advice? <laughs> Who's that? I don't know. Personally, I think it's just a lack of a pool of people. Yeah. Doesn't mean you're good at it. <laughs> mm. yeah. You'll have to grab one of the other package and drop one. Oh, that's a guy. See a hot dog in my equipment. I'm not going to. I mean, I can turn the fryer back on. How many did you eat? One, two. You're going to have the. Is there another one in there? No. Mom's eating it. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Poor Owen. It's fine. I'll just shove one in my way. Them cheap hot dogs ain't the same when you put them in the microwave as a fryer. No. I know. They really don't are. They instantly excel to three levels above the hot dog they are when they've been deep fried. They really do. They become something special. They are about to see us again at 2 a.m., Kevin says. Good. Does anybody know how we got the microwave? Oh. <laughs> Does anybody know how society got the microwave? Who invented the microwave? Invented what it was invented for? Yeah. Why they invented it? There you go. That's my favorite thing of all time. That is one of my favorite stories of all time. It literally just made me think of that when you're like, hmm. they just kind of explode after a few seconds of microwaving. Hey, we've all watched, we've all watched that thing on YouTube that surprises you that it's really real. Like it's oh, this is clickbait, and then you find out and you actually sit there and watch it. And you go what? And you go what? Not quite, Kevin. Not to kill mice. To bring them back. Not mice, guinea pigs. Mice, guinea pigs. To mice. reanimate them after they've been frozen. Yeah. You gotta find the video. You gotta find the video how the microwave was invented or whatever. Guy did it about I think the video is three or four years old now. He had heard the urban legend that the microwave had been re had been invented to reanimate frozen because in the 50s like in the 40s and 50s there was that whole mentality of we're going to cry over freeze people so we can bring them back in the future so they were working on the technology to do that and by working on that technology she means they were freezing shit trying to bring it back to life <laughs> we never got past the mice the guinea pigs hamsters Hamsters. We never got past the hamsters. But now we can microwave a hot dog. Anyways, the guy had heard the story. This YouTuber had heard the story. And so then he investigated it. Come to find out it's true. That's why they invented the microwave. Scientists invented it to reanimate frozen animals. And then come to find out the lead guy on the project that's responsible for it was still alive at like a hundred years old and he goes and it interviews the guy yeah it, it was like four years ago i just stumbled across it one night you know you're clicking oh what's that yeah that's too good to be true <laughs> so my next pet or owen came up with this the other day i thought we should get hamsters. When we get when we get in there, we should get hamsters. Then when we gotta go go on vacation, you just throw them in the freezer. And you get home, pop them in the microwave. 
Like, how convenient. Like, the most convenient bed yeah. of all time. Right. <laughs> you ain't got to buy food when you're gone. You ain't got to pay for somebody's house. Throw it in the freezer. You come home, throw it in the microwave. You get mad at it, it gets in trouble, throw it in the freezer. <laughs> you get mad at it, it gets in trouble. Bad hamster <laughs> in the freezer. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you guys. <laughs> that was so dark. <laughs> that poor hamster. <laughs> Don't come back from that. No. No, you guys, that was a. You're welcome for my great idea. No. Oh. <laughs> See, I always thought it was developed just from radar, you know, but I was because you know the radar range, you know, and da da da. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's no secret. I learned, you know, when I was young and on those ships, work first work on those deep. Ships, see ships with powerful antennas and powerful radars you got to clear with the bridge before you go up on those decks that they shut off and secure everything so you're not getting cooked right and so i just assume that that's like where the microwave came from you know because it essentially is like a band of radar waves or whatever right you know? i mean it kind of is but it yeah no it wasn't wasn't like somebody was standing up on the mast and got hot and went, huh, there's heat coming off the no no no. That was one of the theories when someone went up to an antenna and they were chocolate in their cockpit and all of a sudden. Yeah, there yeah, there is some truth to the yeah, so there is some story about somebody's chocolate bar melting in their pocket. That's how they discovered it or something, but yeah. Uh, yeah. Well then I tried reanimating my food and that's all came along. Yeah, the limitations are like hamsters. Anything bigger than a hamster? Yeah, well, I think there might be some limitations to how many times it can be done, too. I don't know about that. That sounds like a video. You want to find out? <laughs> I want to find out. Hey, Mythbusters! <laughs> we got a job for you. <laughs> I'd love to do that one. Right? I can just see the PETA warning. I, don't, I was going to say, I don't know if we want to get into the animal testing aspect of this in this conversation. <laughs> oh. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. Kathy says that's just gross. <laughs> I'm, I'm still stuck on the bad answer in the freezer. I think the impressive part though is they tried a bunch of other stuff. Like they knew what it didn't work on. Yeah. Like they were wholesale, like killing off stuff. Right. Wow. I guess we were hungry, man. No fries left, no hush puppies. Well, left. I don't know if it's so much that we're hungry, but it's like a social event where you always eat a little bit more than you should. Oh, no, I was hungry. <laughs> yeah, the only thing I ate all day long was like six hush puppies. Yeah. At like three o'clock. Right. Me too. Yeah. So, no, I was actually hungry. Yep. That was not alive. That's pretty good. I know I can't. I know you, you Owen, can't wait for the, me to go up and push that little button off so we can get out there and start slinging the rest of them. Right? Yeah. You can feel it, the fun. <laughs> it wasn't that horrible when I heard that before. So. No, it's 70 degrees in the garage. Yeah. So, like, it should be 20 minutes that time. Yeah. I can't wait to see it fiberglass. <clears throat> Excuse me. I've been waiting for this day for a long time. 
Oh. I'll see what it looks like, like a whole boat. And then they get that done. Like, I'm excited to start the seats and get him some seats sewed. And I want to see the boat with some seats in it. It's going to look cool. I'm excited for him. So. There may be another hot dog. I don't know. Some hush puppies going Get down. dropped down later. Yeah, I just turned it back on. I just turned it's it back been a long on. time since I mean deep fried hot dogs. Oh my gosh, like the worst food ever. But it's been so long since we've actually had deep fried hot dogs. They're pretty good. Um, it's been a while. I think we, we did them in like the last year. What do I want to know? He's looking up there no, at that we, screen laughing. Somehow we haven't dropped a single beer. When I would have just bought oh. the whole day. Uh, no, we had six for a hot second. Mm -hmm. And we had six before. No, I did. I did deep fry some hot dogs, a bratwurst or something about three, four months ago. Mm -hmm. One night. Maybe I missed it. Yeah, I Maybe did. Missed it. it was pretty good. Yeah, because it wasn't that long ago that I did it. Right. It's the easiest way to cook. If the deep fryer didn't the kill you, the only thing that would make it better is if you coated it in some cornmeal. I thought you were gonna say butter. <laughs> <laughs> Corn dogs. What? Kevin says, let's talk about what's in those hot dogs. <laughs> well, whatever it is. Uh, yeah, I bombed that. <laughs> I was going to go somewhere with reheating the hot dog in the fridge and, or in the microwave and going, you know. But. Oh, and wasn't there one of them hot dogs left? Or you ate them both? We don't want to know what's in the hot dogs, Kevin. Five. But I'm done. I'm pulling out. Well, I was just thinking, like, my hush puppy mix yeah. essentially is a corn dog. A corn dog. Right. It's just a little bit thicker. Adds more milk to it. <laughs> Kathy says it could be the hamster. Kevin <laughs> I'm just that. saying, I'm kind of right there with you, Kathy. There before, Kevin. Is that what's in the hot dog? Kevin says those ones missed the microwave. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, if you just microwave them a little, do they move faster? <laughs> what? I mean, they already kind of move fast. Are you talking about the hot dogs or the hamsters? <laughs> well, yeah, well, you can go your way. <laughs> I don't know. Oh, I, I, you know, I, I just feel that we're, we're, we should tread softly here. <laughs> See us getting kicked off YouTube. Uh, gory content. <laughs> well, I can see. I'm not going to do nothing. But then what happens when... Little Johnny. Do not try this at home. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do not try that at home. Write to Mythbusters. If you're that interested in it, write to Mythbusters. I'm sure they'll find it intriguing and have a video. Let Mythbusters do Maybe it. Maybe we should have led <laughs> with the do not try this at home. Probably. The disclaimer. Probably. Yeah. Oh, well. We weren't on top of that. I'm going to go remind my friend Steven that you could freeze his hair. <laughs> no. Don't do it. The poor hamster. Does anybody else Girl, want a hush puppy while I'm back here making sure. hamster balls? I would. I like one. Two, maybe four. <laughs> Someday the things your children will do. You know, that is probably exactly how the guy that came up with the microwave's parents felt. <laughs> That's what he said. Dad. Dad you're killing me. <laughs> Dad. Guess what we're working on? What a good science fair that this guy to go to. <laughs> Kevin, that's awesome. Wellington Science Fair and the guy to go to.
Oh my gosh. <laughs> I really want to do it for me because we do a science fair. I, I get first place for doing that. Reanimating. I'm probably going to call you home. Be fast. <laughs> yeah, low energy wave. I'm sure that would constitute a phone call home. I don't know. Nothing else over there at school does. <laughs> That's true. Anyway. Oh, yeah. More hot dogs are coming. Awesome. Uh, oh, get in there. There we yeah. go. There I am. Hush puppies going. Hot dogs going. I mean, at this point, I'm really interested in finding somebody who has an actual original idea. Because every time I encounter something new, it's been done before. <laughs> and you find the history on it. Well, when you consider that actually once upon a time, somebody developed a microwave just to heat a hamster. <laughs> I mean, that, pretty much, that pretty much tells you this. it's all been done. Yeah. All, all Even right. if you don't know it's been done. <laughs> We're kind of stuck on hamster. <laughs> like a hamster in the wheel. Kevin says, Owen, just tell them it's Wonka vision. <laughs> uh, I don't know. What would you do for a science? You don't have no science fair projects. No, you, you you don't get, he's a big kid now. They don't have yeah. none of that exciting stuff. No, they don't. <laughs> If they did, though. Can you imagine going to the Catholic school and going, here's my science project <laughs> and reanimating a hamster? That would be Lake epic. Hey, oh my God, he's got there. cousins. Like I'm, just, I'm so presenting the idea. Hope, you know when you have I a bad hope, idea, I hope you know right now just Justin keep is your watching. Mouth shut. <laughs> just keep your mouth shut. Let that one go. That is a, that is a great. Let it go. I'm just saying, like it's like maybe Emmett's still in junior high. What would be even better is if you could just use a normal microwave. Like you didn't have to critique it, honey. you just had to hit the frog. That would be the best part. Better yet, like you guys are like being too literal. You think about this, right? Did they make like they used to make those bake ovens for girls? You know, easy bake. Easy bake. Did they make an easy microwave? Because I'm sure that's not as powerful as a microwave. <laughs> Well, I was just thinking, like, he wouldn't even have to, like, for a science fair, he wouldn't even have to, like, do the experiment. You could just do the display and the and the story of how the microwave was developed. Generally, in a science oh, fair, oh, oh, they want a demonstration. This time, they're not going. <laughs> the, I have faith. I have faith. But at the end of the day, by having this during the science display, Fair and it being displayed, not recreated, but just being displayed and documented and everything on what happened. What happens when kids see it at the science fair and go home? <laughs> <laughs> then you're actually educating the youth because <laughs> they're going to go home and experiment and do what they're supposed to do try things and fail. <laughs> And then you know that they're learning something. Poor <laughs> <laughs> children. What are you talking about? The children, the poor hamsters. How many hamsters are going to suffer? I can the just, gonna go I can just see some poor dad yelling at one kid over the. You know what you did to your sister's <laughs> hamster? <laughs> But Dan, I seen it in the science fair. The microwave was supposed to bring it back. Well, get her another one. They all look the same and they multiply easily. Oh, oh gosh. Kevin says, think John will get called into the father's office. And does that church shun like the Amish? Oh, yeah. 
Man, I got I damn near got called into the school. It wasn't even my kid today. <laughs> that was funny. I was picking up my brother's kids. Yeah, what was that but one? They going? weren't in trouble. They had done nothing wrong. Yeah. The other children had done something wrong. At any rate. At any rate. That's how you get through an we hour. End, guys. Yeah, and that's how we end and we just go good night, Irene. Good night, Irene. Yeah. And y'all enjoy a wonderful weekend, and we hope to see you next Friday on You're Gonna Need a Bigger Boat. Have Good a night. night. Good night, Irene. Good night, Irene. <laughs> oh, push the button one too many times. There we go.